Tomorrow I leave, I get on the airplane and I fly to Canada and this whole adventure starts in two days. And I always get a little tender hearted before I leave on adventures. So many emotions and thoughts and things swirling in my head and fear of course, but also, you know, definitely excitement. I'm looking forward to this. I've been dreaming of this for more than a year, planning this for more than a year and it's time to go and my heart feels it. I had been dreaming about doing this race for well over a year. And that's because I rode the route in 2020 and had the time of my life. Oh, what a beautiful day. Woo, yes. And so I wanted to go back and almost you know, recreate the magic. But this time I wanted to go a little bit faster. It's a race. I wanted to push myself. I wanted to challenge myself. I've done lots of ultra marathons with running, but uh, this was gonna be new to me. Thank you, Crazy Larry! Yeah, baby! Woo! Here we go, here we go! Dream come true right now. So the Tour Divide is the most well-known bikepacking race in the world, and it follows the Great Divide mountain bike route, which travels from Banff, Canada to the border of Mexico in southern New Mexico, about 2,700 miles. The route changes here and there throughout the years, but that's pretty much it. I'm just riding my bike out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Smiling bigger than I've ever smiled before. So leading up to the race, I was way more nervous and anxious than I've ever been before a bikepacking adventure. And I think that's because it was a race. And uh, it was a very uncomfortable feeling. I didn't really like it. Even when I was in Boulder packing up my stuff the week before the race, just like, ah, just a little on edge. And usually before a big adventure, I'm excited and I can't wait for it to start. With this one, I was... I was nervous and it was, it was spooking me. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh, <laughs> emotions, so many emotions. Oh, you know, uh, man, I have 24 hours till this thing starts and uh, I'm scared, but I'm really grateful. I'm incredibly grateful for this opportunity. So in my mind, before even getting to the start line, I thought best case scenario, I could do about 110 miles a day, which would be 25 days, which is a lot of miles a day, but it's nowhere near the people out in front. The elite racers are absolutely incredible. I just wanted to challenge myself. So the race was with me and nobody else. With every revolution of my pedals, I feel myself just calming down. My blood pressure is lowering and I'm just, Feeling better and better. <laughs> 24 hours ago, I was feeling so nervous. When I go on these adventures, of course I love riding my bike, the act of pedaling, but I, I also love connecting with myself more, connecting with nature, connecting with all the wonderful people around me, the trail magic, whoever it might be, animals, birds, the sounds around me, the sights, the you know sunrises, sunsets, rainbows, all that magical stuff. And when I push myself to the edge, a lot of times it cracks my heart open in a way that is scary, but it's also a beautiful thing because that's when the good stuff happens. That's when I get really vulnerable and uh, really just take it all in, take in all the magic. And I start thinking about everybody I love back home and I start dreaming about what I want to do with my life. And here I am on my bike in the middle of nowhere and I'm just pedaling and tears are streaming down my face and it's just like, Ah, this is why I'm here. It's a beautiful thing. Nature is definitely medicine. Oh, it's so beautiful. I went out there with this goal, 100-ish miles a day, push myself, challenge myself, but also have enough time to connect with people and connect with the racers and, and experience trail magic. And I was doing that. This experience wasn't all agony by any means. I would say 95% of it was, was beautiful. It was exactly what I wanted, but it was hard. It was way harder than I thought it was gonna be. Oh God. This is, this is crazy. Oh my God. Wow. The first crack 
that happened was really the weather. It was so cold and it was so wet. And cold and wet weather is really my kryptonite. It makes me feel so uncomfortable. And I had about a bit of bad luck last night. My air mattress, the valve broke, so it didn't hold any air. So I was sleeping on cold cement. Oh, wow. I am so ready for warmer weather. You know, I was, I was okay for the first four or five days. Like the, the idea of stopping never even crossed my mind, even though it was very hard and the conditions were not very pleasant. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, it feels good to let out some howls. Man, I've been so tight and so tense for the past few days. Oh, I need to let it out. Of all the things that I thought could happen out there, saddle sores was not at the top of the list. And so when they started developing, I was like, uh-oh, this is bad. And of course I had some chamois cream to try to make them better, make them more comfortable, but they just got worse and worse. And I'm thinking the, the major reason why I got saddle sores is because of the wetness. I was riding cold and wet for a few days in a row and I was riding with waterproof pants on that are bunching up on the seat. And, uh, you know, I had a, a little bit more weight in my backpack than normal. And I think that all, all those factors led to some real bad saddle sores, which were so uncomfortable, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I can't believe I've even sitting down right now. It feels like somebody is holding a blowtorch to my ass. <laughs> I can laugh about it only because it's so ridiculous. Oh. It wasn't until the sixth day, towards the end of the sixth day, I had, it was a 125 mile day where I was like, oh, this, this hurts so bad. So I might be having my lowest low of the trip so far. This is unbelievably difficult for me right now. And actually on that day, I rolled into the Llama Ranch. I am so destroyed right now. <laughs> I cannot wait to see Barbara and John. Oh, I need a hug. And the Llama Ranch is this oasis of trail magic. Barbara and John run the place. I met them in 2020 and I've stayed in touch with them ever since. And I was so excited to get to them because it, it was almost like getting to family. Hey! There they are! I can't believe it! I'm so oh, bad. Man. Oh. So great to oh, see you, man. Oh, Barbara, it's so, so good, good to see you. See you. At this point, my emotional state is fragile, and I'm really excited to be with John and Barbara. But in the back of my head, I'm starting to think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off with these saddle sores. Because the thing is, with saddle sores, the only way to cure them is to not ride your bike. You have to get off your seat. And if you continue sitting on your seat with open wounds, it, they're only going to get worse. And of course, I was putting stuff on them and Neosporin and other stuff and all the other racers were trying to help me and give me their magical concoctions, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. I remember sleeping that night kind of uneasy because I didn't know how I was going to feel when I woke up. Okay. We love seeing you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're what, you make this special. You make this magical, mm. you know. So do you. Yeah, I guess we're all part of it, but I mean, without you, I mean, a lot of us would be suffering. And then right when I sit on that saddle, right when I sit on that seat, it all comes back. Oh yeah, these saddle sores haven't gone anywhere. I'm in trouble. Bye, I love you so much. You're amazing. I really don't want to put my seat, my butt on this seat. Oh, oh this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. I'm afraid of not finishing the route at this point. I'm afraid of not accomplishing this dream that I had been dreaming about for well over a year. I'm afraid of letting down all of my viewers who are dot watching me as I'm going through this experience. I knew a lot of people all over the world are really excited for me because I'm excited. And so when I'm excited, my audience gets excited and I didn't want to let anybody down. And on a personal level, I didn't want to let myself down. It's very rare that I quit anything. I'm gonna head into Helena today, the capital of Honduras. Honduras, I don't know where I am, Montana. <laughs> Goes to show how messed up my brain is. I've done a lot of very difficult challenges throughout my life, whether it's on a bike, 
or my two feet in a running race. I once did a Discovery Channel survival show in the jungles of Venezuela where I starved for a month, and that was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So I'm accustomed to pushing myself, physically and mentally. And now at this moment, I'm reflecting on the 26 days I've been here and how many times I've been close to pushing that button. And if I had pushed that button, I wouldn't be here to experience this moment. And how many times I dug deep, deeper than I've ever dug in my entire life, and channeled my mother's energy. It's such an amazing feeling that I've never had before. When I'm out there, of course, it's just me. It's my personal challenge. But I'm filming this challenge and all of my personal challenges and sharing that with the world. And I didn't want to let people down. I know that people look to me as a source of inspiration. And I didn't know how this would be perceived if I decided to stop. All of these emotions are swirling through my head on top of absolute agony because I can't sit on my bike. And I, I want to finish this with all of my heart and soul. I am determined. And I want to finish it for them as well because I want to share this triumphant story. Ooh, I'm walking a little funny and sitting a little funny. I am in Helena, Montana, the capital. And I'm not going to go any further on the Tour Divide. It has been an excruciatingly hard decision to make because I obviously thought that I would get to the finish line and I'm not even close. In my life, I always try to take into account love with every decision that I make. Am I doing this in service of love? And the decision to stop was out of love and respect for my body. And I've done enough hard things throughout my life to know what my limits are. I want to be here for the next adventure. I love my body. I respect my body. I didn't want to keep pushing myself into the ground and cause further harm. And on that note, I started this race out of love. Oh man, this is so fun. I'm so distracted. It's taking my mind away from all the, the nerves that I've had and just out here just giving high fives and handshakes and hugs to everybody. The energy is incredible. I love riding my bike. I love connecting with amazing people. I love being out in nature. I even loved getting snowed on in Canada. It was actually beautiful. Ho, ho, ho! Man! Makes you feel alive being out here. Yee right in the middle of the elements. Even though it was cold, I was like, God, this is really special. Like here I am out on my bike in the middle of nowhere, riding up a mountain. And this is amazing. This is a moment I'll never forget. You know how when it snows, the world is just so quiet. I love the solitude. The audience, you out there have been exceptional through this. I've gotten so many supportive comments from around the world, thousands. And it's been overwhelming the amount of love I've, I've felt from all of you through this. And acceptance that it's okay, Ryan. It's okay, you made the right decision. And so I need to hear that because I'm beating myself up pretty hard. And so I am so grateful for all of you for lifting me up during this tough time. You know, it's really, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Oh, I didn't get to do my big bike race, but it's a big deal to me. And everybody out there is just giving me a big virtual hug and it's, it feels incredible. I never want to do this race again. I never want to do any bikepacking race. Racing bikes is just not in my blood. I will race running, but not on my bikes. I want to go back to touring and enjoying and jumping in creeks and just having fun. And, you know, I like to push my body, but not to this limit. I mean, riding for 15 hours a day is just too much for me. And I have so much respect for everybody in this race who are out there fighting and charging and moving forward. It's absolutely incredible what these people are doing. Since coming home, I've felt a lot of sadness. You know, I wanted to be out there. 
I wanted to finish this thing. This guy, Gabriel, who I met and we rode with for three days, he became a good friend in a very short amount of time. And I feel in a weird way like I, I let him down. I bailed on him. I am so glad Gabriel is with me. What a wonderful day. Oh, man. What a wonderful day. <sighs> and I bailed on myself. And I bailed on my dreams. And that's been hard. It's been really hard to come to terms with that. And so sadness is probably the, the main emotion that I'm feeling right now, sadness and disappointment. You know, when I quit, when I decided to stop, in that moment, I felt relief, of course. Oh, I don't have to wake up and ride my bike tomorrow. I can give my butt a rest. But it's been seven days now, and it's been a roller coaster of emotions, and it's not comfortable, it's not easy, but I need to go through this. I need to really sit with this and learn from this and appreciate this moment. I am healthy. I'm not, I don't have a major injury. I didn't crash or break any bones. Like, it's not that bad. I will be fine. I will go out on another adventure soon. So I have to balance the sadness with the reality of, Ryan, you're okay. You're back in Boulder. You're with your family and your friends. Life is gonna be fine. So maybe it was a good thing that I got off my bike when I did. Since being home this past week, I've been to the doctor twice to address some other major discomforts. And I was just diagnosed with prostatitis, which means, yes, I had to have a prostate exam. <laughs> Don't recommend it. I have to be on antibiotics for the next three weeks. Prostatitis is essentially an inflammation infection of the prostate. And if I had continued riding my bike, things would have gotten real bad. We're talking extremely painful urination and peeing out blood. Is that TMI? I'm sorry. You know, I feel like to a certain extent, and I've never felt my age. I've always felt just young and strong. Now I'm 45 years old. And even though I feel as fit as I've ever been in my life, maybe my body's telling me something to slow down a little bit. And that's really hard to grapple with, mentally and physically. I, I want to be young and strong forever, right? We all do. And my body is saying, maybe you need to take it easy, buddy. <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> Whew. That's my mantra. I don't think of it as failure. Obviously, you know, I put out a, a great effort. I rode 600 miles in six days through the hardest terrain on the entire route through crazy weather. I pushed myself. I met wonderful humans. I did what I wanted to do, essentially. But I just didn't do it as long as I wanted to do it. <laughs> you know, so it's not a failure. There's always something to learn. And for the past week since I've been home, I've been ruminating on this almost all day, every day. I can't stop thinking about it. It's about 10.30 p.m. This is the fourth night I've been home in Boulder. And today has been the hardest day since coming home. You know, I've been, I had been pleasantly surprised. Wow, I actually feel okay, but today was hard. I think it's, it's hitting me that I'm not out there. I got a message tonight from Alyssa, who I was riding with off and on, and she's like, we miss you. And I was just like, ah, oh, I miss you too. I wish I was out there. For me personally, when I'm going through a hard time, it's very important to go through it and to feel it and to talk to friends and put it out there and not hold it in because it helps me process everything. And of course, I'm learning from other people's wisdom who have also gone through these things themselves. And it's good to hear from other people who have said, you know what, Ryan, this happened to me too and I'm a better person for it. I'm, I'm more humble and more appreciative. Right there, that's the sun. That's the magic right it's there. It's barely hitting our faces, but man, it is just a boost, <sighs> mentally and physically, to know that we're gonna have sun today. At least I think so. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't even looked at the forecast, but everybody said it was gonna be warmer today. <sighs> oh yeah, buddy. You haven't put your sunglasses on the whole trip. 
Not since day one I haven't had them on, but now I need to put them on so I can cover up my ugly eyeballs. <laughs> the last couple years I've been talking about this on my channel where I'm feeling a little bit of burnout. And I'm wondering how much longer can I do this? How much longer can I push myself on adventure after adventure after adventure and come home and edit these videos? And I, I don't know. I don't know how much longer I can do this or how much longer I want to do this. When I was younger, it was the dream come true. Like, oh my God, I've, I've made it. I have a YouTube channel. I get to travel for a living and go on adventures. Indiana Jones, it's like, I did it. But now at 45, it's, it's a lot more tiring. And that gives me anxiety because I have a mortgage. I have bills. I wonder what I'm going to do with my life if I don't do this. I don't know. It's scary. There's no doubt it's, it's scary. And I'm sitting home right now with the sore ass wondering what I'm going to do. Can't go on any adventures right now. Can't create content. No bueno. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I have not been on my bike in exactly 14 days and it feels so incredibly good to be back out here. It feels like I'm home where I belong. And as I've pedaled up this mountain, I have felt a lot of stress and anxiety and emotions just lift. And that's the power of the bicycle. And these two weeks have been uh, tough, but I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for this whole experience, even though it did not go the way I was hoping, not even close. <sighs> what am I going to do next? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what the next adventure is, and that's okay. I'll figure it out. And one of the big things that I've learned over these past, this past experience is that uh, it's gonna be okay. It's always gonna be okay. And that might not sound very profound, but it's true. Everything's gonna be okay. <sighs> Thanks for joining the ride. Whew. We'll see what's next, but for now, I'm grateful that I'm home early because I get to celebrate the 4th of July with my family and friends in my favorite little mountain town. Woo <laughs> Here we go. Onward, forward, always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a new merch line coming out called Save My Prostate. Team Doozer. <laughs>